Hello and welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses in New York. Or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. Wow, I look really tired. Um, okay, so I got a question about how to network with real estate investors. So I'm going to give you a couple of methods, and if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you what I think is the best method. So the first thing I would do if I, wherever I was, is I would go find out where the foreclosure auctions are held in my county or my town and i would show up there and i would just watch right and i would talk to people if i could um because those are real estate investors if they're buying at auction i did i went to uh, every auction in nassau county every single tuesday for four years and um i learned a lot right and it helped me and grew my business and it was great but at some point i realized that that is not should not be the main, uh, what am I looking for? The main method you are using to get deals because it's completely out of your control when you go to an auction because I'll just tell you how the auctions work. You, you buy a list of what's going to show, what's, what's scheduled to show up. So there's two places you can buy it from, Property Shark or LI Profiles. And they give you a huge list on Thursdays and a huge port and, and you can spend all day Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday researching those houses the problem is by Monday a huge portion of those of those um, properties are adjourned already they're not going to go up for auction and that could be for a million reasons uh, the the part the homeowner may have paid off the loan the homeowner may have declared bankruptcy there may be a, a, a problem with some paperwork it could be a hundred different things one of the attorneys may have got sick whatever it is so a huge portion of them are going to be adjourned or, or or canceled and then you get so you have some that show up on tuesday and of those that show up on tuesday a lot of them the bank's upset price that means the minimum amount the bank's going to take is more than you are going to be able to pay and most of the banks don't give you the upset price so you don't know that you get the auction and then even if the bank's upset price is below what you want to pay you can still get outbid by somebody else so it's completely out of your control and I, it took me a long time to realize that that was not that should not be the main method of getting deals. Foolish of me, uh, a shame on me. That it took me four years to figure that out. I should have figured it out uh, in a much shorter amount of time. So that's one way. Uh, another way is real estate network, networking events. There are a lot of real estate groups um, in in New York for sure in Long Island and you can go to these events and network with people and talk to them right a lot of lenders so what was that one was it Wheeland there's a lot of big lenders that run events and they'll basically let anybody come and you can find a lot of investors there um, so if I were you and you wanted to network I might call a bunch of hard money lenders um, and I would say hey I'm an investor can I get on your list? And they, they want they want people to come to these events. You know, I know you think, well, I'm nobody. Why do they want me to come? They want anybody to come to these events. They, they, they really don't, they don't want them empty. So there are always events, right? Right. I think right now in, my, in Florida, there's an IMN event that's also a lending event that you have to pay to go to that one. But there's plenty of stuff in your local area, I'm sure, that lenders are running that they want people to come to. Um, what? How else can you network with real estate investors? Um, you can call title companies. Uh, title companies also run events and you can call title companies to get names of investors and they'll help you so that is a, a way to do that who else who else lenders are really going to be a good source now the really best way is to find a RIA a real estate investors association now in my area in Long Island there's a couple and I didn't like either of them and not that they were bad but one of them makes you sit for lunch for dinner and I can't eat any stuff there because because it's not kosher um, and they have very, very long presentations. That drove me bananas. I wanted to blow my brains out. Another one um, was no dinner, but they it was a long it was a long process, and it was a, basically a sell job for coaching. The truth is, both of them were sell jobs for coaching, and I didn't like being sold. And they were expensive; they weren't cheap. So um, I created my own RIA, the Nassau County Real Estate Investors Association. We meet; we have a monthly meeting, and then we meet. Uh, another time each month at a property I'm working on. So um, I'm, this is Tuesday, February 8th, and on Thursday, February 10th, we're having a quick big meeting at a wholesale deal I'm doing in Massapequa Park. And then our monthly meeting will be uh, Tuesday the 22nd. 
And we try to do that twice a month. And I think it's a great place to network and meet people. I know people who have met up and have gone into business together and met up and, and, and found resources. So I think I think ARIA, a Real Estate Investor Association, is a great, great way. So you can check out my RIA. You can check out other RIAs. I, I, I used to go to Manhattan to a RIA. Um, sometimes the people there are very, very new. And always there, there are always going to be people who are new. And then sometimes the people there are more experienced. So I think it's a good way to go. Um, you could feel comfortable there. Um, no matter what your level of expertise is, I think I would recommend it. Um, sometimes you got to show up whether it's worth, you know, whether it's worth the money. I remember when I started and I had a partner, and it was like a hundred dollars a person to go or sixty dollars a person to go. We used to have to ask each other whether it's worth it for us both to go or should one of us go because um, we had no money. Um, so uh, I think that's that's the gist of it. And we're I got to talk for another four minutes, so I'm gonna find something to say. Well, so we really talked about we talked about auctions more than we talked about networking. But I think when it comes to networking, a lot of people contact me all the time and say, "Hey, um, you know how do how do you mentor me? Right? How, how do I get mentored by you?" The key is to provide value. So if you want to come work for me for free, come into my office. I have a couple of offices here. I'm happy to give you stuff to do. What I found over the years is that most people start and don't continue, and therefore I don't want to give them you know mission critical important things to do. Because then it just doesn't get done. Um, but if you can prove to me that you can show up, and I don't need you to come every day. If you don't want to, you can come every, you know, a couple times a week. But I want you to be regular so that I know that during certain times, things, certain things are getting done. And then as you prove to me that you are actually committed to this, I'll give you more important things to do. Usually I'm giving people things to do that are marketing related. And if, the, if any of those marketing, um, if any of that marketing turns into a deal, I pay them, right? So I recently sent somebody like, $6,400 on a $64,000 wholesale deal because he had made, he sent a text. So I think um, that's how I define mentorship, right? I, I offer coaching, right? Coaching to me is a straight up trade of time for money. You're going to pay me. I'm going to give you time. Which reminds me, I got to call one of my students. Um, and mentorship to me is that you're going to give me your time. And in exchange, I'm going to give you some of my time. So I'm going to be there for you. I can ask questions. And there, there is usually a chance that, you can turn, that something can turn into a deal that will turn into money. But um, only the people that are going to stick with it are going to get paid because most people don't. Um, now, what else? So that's how I define it. So, But the key is offer some value. So people call me and go, what can I do for you? And I'm like, well, I don't know what you could do for me, right? I'm not... And people, a lot of people are not close. If you're not close, I feel weird giving you something to do when you're working remotely because I don't even know if you're going to do it or not. Right? So this is why I want people to come into the office. And if someone's in Westchester, I, I, I don't tell them, hey, come into the office because it's too freaking far. So if they're close, if they're in Queens or they're in Nassau, I don't mind them coming into the office, You know, work a little bit. I'll give you stuff to do. I always have things to do. And then it could, A, turn into some money for you, and B, you have access to ask me questions and you have access to, to to my resources and I'm happy to help you with that. But I'm in and out of the office. I'm trying to get to the point where I'm more in the office than out of the office or out of the out of the office not working. That's even better. Um, but that's a process that I'm on my way to. Um, and that's how I define mentorship and coaching. So if there's something you can provide, so people, you know, people always assume, well, I have a deal, I have a deal. It's not so simple. Um, most of the time when people bring me deals, they're not deals, right? The price isn't right or they didn't really ask the right questions. Um, so what's a better plan is, hey, I'm willing to work. I, I can come to the office for three hours, two, two times a week, something like that. I, I'll, I'll take that, right? I'll figure out what to do with you. I have somebody actually starting on Thursday. Um, so that's how I define uh, mentorship and how you can provide value to me. Provide value to me by working. You know, I'll give you stuff to do. And... Uh, We'll see how long you stick at stick at it, right? That's part of part one of the huge determinants of whether somebody's going to be successful. This is whether they're resilient and whether they're persistent. So I hope this was helpful. Um, again, my number one tip for networking with real estate investors is to go find a RIA, R E I A, Real Estate Investors Association in your area. Um, there are other tips there too. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're interested in my course that teaches how to do what I do, go to howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com. And if you are interested in finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching I offer, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. What else? Oh, if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any channel, please give the thumbs up. And uh, please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I don't always know what to say. You can ask any question. It doesn't even, it doesn't even have to be about the video you're watching. 
Um, if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply. If it's something I've covered before, I'll send you links to the videos. And if it's something new, then I will be proud to do a new video on it. Um, so please keep the comments coming. I really need them. Sometimes I draw a complete blank as to what to say. So thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it.